The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Canola School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. Today I am here via Skype and social distancing with uh, Justine Corn-Nelson who is an agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. How's it going today? Good, good. You know, enjoying another day in the home office, so keeping distant from everyone and <laughs> doing our part for sure. Yeah. So we are now sitting at, what, April 16th today, and uh, many producers are either hitting the fields or looking towards hitting the fields. Um, and one of the main diseases that canola producers often face is black leg. What can you tell me a bit about black leg and how it is an earlier disease that producers will see? Yeah, so um, black leg has been here. It's been around for quite some time. Producers are well aware of it. Um, it is an early season disease, and, and that's where it's kind of tough and misleading at times. We usually see the, the severe symptoms at the end of the season or near harvest. Um, but if you can protect and manage your canola crops early in the season, you're going to do a better job of managing black leg. So um, just early signs and scouting is really important. Um, the one thing that producers can do now, I know we're kind of a few weeks out from seeding, but when you're out looking at, at your field and getting ready for field preparations and maybe out scouting, seeing what weeds you've got, things like that. Um, you can look at old canola residue. Um, so especially if you're on that tightened uh, rotation, so if you're growing canola every one and two years, um, you're going to find old canola residue in that field. So you're able to pick up that residue and look to see if there's any of the fruiting bodies on it, which are a, a sign of black leg. So you're looking for pycnidia or pseudothesia. Um, so they're kind of black pepper-like material on, on that old residue. So that's like your first sign that, okay, yes, I've got black leg within this field, it could potentially be an issue if the environmental conditions are right for it. So what are some of the management strategies producers can use besides scouting? Yeah, so early season, um, you know, at Variety Choice, we in Canada, we grow all resistant or moderately resistant uh, varieties to this disease. So that's, you know, one of your top lines of defenses there. Um, depending on your situation, if you are on a, a tighter rotation and have struggled with black leg in the past, um, that would be a, an area where an early season fungicide application would potentially pay off. Uh, we find that fungicide applications don't necessarily... Um, give you that full return on, on a product or return on investment, um, mainly because producers are missing that primary window for infection. Uh, for black leg, for that old residue be, to be producing spores, it's super early in the season. So when we hit about 15 degrees, 16 degrees, and it had, 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 had um, you know, just a little bit of moisture, that old residue is going to start producing spores. Uh, so you want to coat that early season canola that's coming out, so that cotyledon canola, um, to help protect it. So we're just missing that window. So the earlier, the better for a fungicide application. So what are some of the, uh, do you have numbers as far as economic uh, repercussions it can have on uh, your canola crop? Yeah, so, you know, we've had some uh, recent work here in the last few years come out of the University of Alberta looking at yield loss um, and, and understanding really that critical window of infection. So we, we really have honed into that um, for black leg to cause yield loss or severe losses, it's going to be affecting early in the season. So it's going to cause or it's going to uh, infect plants between that cotyledon to two leaf stage. So if you can protect plants at that stage, it's extremely important because um, that's where you're going to see yield loss at the end of the season. Any infections later on in the season, um, they can't move down into the stem to cause that cankering where we see yield loss. Um, in regards to the actual yield loss itself, um, black legs rated on a zero to five scale. Um, where you take the cross section of the plant, looking at the root material and how much uh, infected black material is actually in it, um, and from there you can and uh, you determine the the severity of it. And for each unit of increase, so moving from a, a rating of a one to a two, you're losing 17% um, yield per plant. Uh, so right, it, it becomes quite a little economic uh, scheme to figure that out what the math is on it. But um, for for a really low infection, you do see significant yield losses. And can you, uh, what are some of the things you can do? I know this is jumping quite a bit ahead, but after harvest, um, can you be clipping to check for black leg? 
Yeah, so the, the best time to assess the damage for that, that crop that you were growing was right around 60% seed color change. Um, that recommendation is put into place mainly so you can tell the differences between different um, diseases that could be infecting your crop. Uh, once you get later or post-harvest, uh, that, that old residue really starts to degrade quickly, uh, so you don't have a clear image of what actual uh, disease is, is infecting your plants. Um, but you still can go out and see the signs of black leg, but you won't get an accurate uh, reading from it. Um, so yeah, if you can go in right before or right before uh, swath timing, or if you're a straight cutter, going in before that and pulling up plants and, and cutting at the through the root material, this is also a great time to look for club root. Um, that's going to give you a much accurate rating. That being said, you can submit samples um, the, uh, post harvest as well to figure out if you're dealing with black leg um, or to figure out what black leg races you are dealing with. And um, you said black leg right now, if you're seeing the spores, there'll be, there'll be tiny little black pepper type size? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, yeah, so those are the fruiting structures of the disease. So they're going to be covered across old, uh, old canola residue. And uh, what are some of the, is there any other signals producers can be looking out for at this time of the year as far as black leg goes or mostly just that fruiting? Yeah, yeah, just the fruiting bodies for right now. Once the crop is established, you can see early season lesions. Uh, once again, they are tougher to see. You kind of have to be down on your hands and knees looking. Uh, they're very tiny, uh, beige-like, and you're going to get the pycnidia through them as well. So you're going to have that black speckling across the lesion. In really severe cases, you will um, start to see the girdling of roots. Um, so this can get confused with root rots very easily. Um, so kind of you know, moving into that two to four leaf stage, when you start seeing plants being pinched off right at the soil surface or right below the soil surface, that's probably a really good indicator it could be black leg. Um, if you're to submit samples, then you're going to get back a bunch of different species. So it's really tough to tease out uh, for sure what's causing that. But if you are seeing leaf lesions, those kind of go hand in hand that it could be a black leg issue. And how long can the black leg spores, so they obviously overwinter then, how, how long can they stay in the soil? So uh, one key thing to note with, with black leg is it's a stubble-borne disease. So it needs that old residue so they don't freely live within the soil. Um, peak spore production is 18 months uh, after plants have died. So we pretty well are targeting for black leg to do well when we grow canola one and two years. So canola wheat, canola wheat, uh, which we do see a lot of. So you're actually putting in that new canola crop right when that old residue is producing the most amount of spores. Um, after that, once you start to move into three to four years, that stubble really breaks apart and the pathogen no longer has um, a place to house itself, so it will die off. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you know what, just with overall with management, um, we can't rely just on resistant varieties. You've got to use all the tools in the toolkit. So uh, making sure your, your crop rotation is correct and you're looking looking for the disease and knowing what you're working with. Uh, I'm from Manitoba, so we see lots of confusion with black leg and verticillium or altenaria. Uh, and that's really going to change your end management practices. So just really honing into that and knowing. Uh, one thing for producers to try to check out if we can get into field tours this season is have a look at some of the new black leg seed treatments that are coming to market. Um, there's a, a few new products that'll be available next year to producers. Uh, so that's something if they are on a kind of a restricted crop rotation, it's something for them to maybe assess if they um, are really struggling with managing black leg. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, no problem, Carol.